it's taken us 48 days, but we're finally going to save some of our data to the files area. That's right, long-term data storage is only 48 days into a 100-day course. I feel like I should have done it earlier for you. feel a bit bad. Sorry. Okay, so today I'm going to click this button to bring in the files pane. This shows us all the files that are saved in our REPL because our REPL doesn't just need to be one file that we're currently working on. We're going to create a program that saves information into a second file in that file pane that can be used later on. But for today, we're just going to get saving. Why do we need to save? Well, everything we've done so far has been stored in the REPL's RAM. RAM is temporary memory. When the power goes off or the stop button is hit on the REPL, all the data that it was holding just disappears into the ether. And that's not exactly what we want to happen because, and you've probably felt this when you got stuck on some of the projects I've been setting recently, when you're adding a bunch of data and you click a button and it crashes and you've lost two minutes of data entry, it gets immensely frustrating. One of the things that computer programs are designed to do is to save all that data offline. The way we do that is we save it to the computer's secondary storage, which isn't in the RAM. For us on Replit, when we save something, we're going to save it into this files pane. The files pane is a normal file tree. We can manually go and add files to that if we want, but we're not going to do that today. We're going to get the computer to save stuff to a file for us. So how are we going to do that? Well, there are three steps to saving anything to a file. Step one is to open the file in a mode that allows us to save to it. We do that like this. Now there are three important things here. First is the variable name. I've called this open file F. I need to give it a variable name because I need to encode, be able to talk to that open file. Until this point, I've always been quite keen on variables having long descriptive names. Turns out when you're messing with a file, you have to call the variable name lots and lots and lots. Therefore, use a short variable name. F works perfectly fine. The second important thing is the name of the file. This file that it's gonna open is called savedfile.txt. Now that could be anything in there with any extension. It could be myfile.baldy if you wanted to. It could be myfile.dave. You could make up your own extension. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to use .txt because if I'm going to be downloading this file, it becomes easier to deal with. The final argument is the type of mode I want it open in. And there are two we'll be looking at today. The first, W, is short for write. And what that's going to do is if that file doesn't exist, it will create it. And it will create a blank file with that name. The problem is that if that file does exist, it'll delete it and put a blank file there. So we've got to be careful with this because we could accidentally write a program that completely wipes out all the things we care about on the computer. Sad times if so. Step two is to actually put something in that file. So we use f.write for that. And once again, anything that goes in the brackets is going to be pushed into the file. I'm just going to put a string here and use our good phrase, hello there. I can use multiple of these F rights if I wanted to. So I could put as many of those F rights in here at the moment. But where this information is going is into the RAM. And you remember from earlier, I said anything in the RAM is temporary. It's transient. When we click stop, that stuff we've put in the RAM disappears. We need to make sure to put that information back into the file in the file tree. And the way we do that is by saving it with f.close. If you miss that line out, nothing gets saved and nothing gets kept there. Let's try this out. Now notice that nothing's appeared on the console, but something has appeared in our files pane. Let's go and click on it. Oh, it says hello there, how nice. What we've done is managed programmatically to open a file up, create it if it's not there, take some text and place it in there and save it. That's pretty darn cool. Now I've expanded it a little bit to prompt the user to type in the text that's going to actually end up in the file. 
and also gives us an option to use some lesser known features of Replit. I can drag my saved file into the bottom half of my edit window and it opens it up there. I'm going to resize that because I want to see the changes that happen to that live as I run it. These features, by the way, of Replit's interface are why it's so great, because I can just open multiple files and see what's happening. Let's run it. And now the consoles prompt me to type something in, so I will. And notice the moment I clicked enter that program finished and saved file.txt down at the bottom got updated with my new text. It did delete the old one first though. And that's the problem with this mode. W for write will delete the old file first. There is an alternative. I'm going to use A, but actually it's always going to do to use A+. The difference is this. A is short for append. It will add whatever we type in onto the bottom of the previous file. The only problem is it will crash if that file doesn't exist. A plus works exactly the same way, but if the file doesn't exist, it will make it first for us. So let's see what difference that does. Well, that's quite magic, isn't it? It just added it onto the end, but what did it do wrong? It literally just glued it to the end. It didn't put a new line in or anything like that. So why don't we change the way it's working so that we put a return at the end. So I'm going to do an F write using an F string. And once I've printed out the variable what text, I'm also going to print out a backslash N, which is our new line character. I'm going to delete everything in save file myself for a moment, just so we can see what that does. So I did line one and line two now goes on a different line because I'm manually adding that new line every time I run it. I've now written a simple program that can output anything to a saved file, which is amazing. Common problems, and there are quite a few, because this is a very different way of working. There's a three step process that needs to be followed. Step two can happen as many times as you want, and that's writing to the file, but you always need to open it and you always need to close it to make sure those changes get saved. Here's a very common problem that we get. Nothing looks wrong in the code, but we click run and we try it. Now, nothing has got saved to the file. Why is that? Well, the main issue is, is that f.close is missing brackets. f.close missing brackets means that it's not a function. And if it's not a function, it can't do anything. So in short, we forgot to actually push the changes to the file pane. By adding those brackets back in, we end up with a system that can actually save the file. So here's another common problem that you might get. In this one, I've tried to write two pieces of text to the file one after the other. So it prompts me for my first one and that gets saved to the line and it prompts me for my second one and nothing happens and I get a crash. Now this crash report is actually really good. It says value error. IO, input output, operation on closed file. So what does that mean? Well, if you look carefully at the code, you'll see that I've closed the file and then tried to write to it again on line six. That's not possible. As soon as the file is closed, the changes have been saved to the actual file and I can't touch that file again without opening it again. The way in which we'd write multiple things to a file is just to put them before the close. Make a bit of space and put all your code that involves writing to the file before the close. The close is essentially your save button. It is the final thing that happens before the end. And now it gets added, but notice that it doesn't get pushed to the file until right at the end, because the end is when the save process actually happens. Once again, I've broken some code. This program should be writing multiple things to files. So please go and fix it for me. Your challenge today is to build one of the most important components of a video game. And this is where we store the high score table. You're going to set up a program that prompts the user for their three letter initials and their score. Their score should be a number out of about 100,000. We should then save both those values into the text file called high.score. This should be in append mode. If the file doesn't exist, the program should make the file 
And every time we add it, we should add the person's initials with a space, followed by their high score, and then start a new line so that the next person's score gets put on a different line. I'd like you to enter two or three scores just to test it works before the program stops. In that loop then, you need a way of telling it that it's completed. So you might need a way of asking if you finished entering that data. Once you're done, share your code with us by publishing it on Replit and use the hashtag Replit 100 Days of Code to share it on social media and get some eyes on your fantastic code ideas. Tomorrow, we're going to load what you've saved back up because once we click that stop button, wouldn't it be nice to load the information we've stored so we don't have to type it again? Yeah, I think it would. Certainly saved me a lot of time typing things out over and over again.